Hello, this is Mr. Ferreira, and I'm going to be talking you through some of the ethical problems in obedience research. This is in response directly to Milgram's research that we looked at in the previous video. Now, I'm also I'm going to mention a few kind of kind of ideas or kind of titles that we can put ethics under, which you'll learn more about in the research methods section. So the first one I'm going to look at specifically is called deception and informed consent, and I'm actually going to combine them together because we know specifically that. Milgram did deceive his participants, okay? He told them that they were doing something different. He said that they were looking at how punishment affects learning, okay? And we see from the black and white footage, he kind of has an experimenter and referring to this and, and pointing to the text that they know. We know that the participants are kind of aware of this idea that you potentially smack a child if, you, if they kind of don't do the right type of thing. And of course, this is not what he's looking at, okay? So therefore he has lied to them. When you don't know everything, it says here, this denied the participants the right to informed consent, okay? So if I agree to do something, I'm consenting. That's what consent means. I'm, I'm saying, yes, I agree to it. Informed consent is saying, I have enough information to consent to this. So clearly, whenever you deceive somebody, they don't have all the information. Now, of course, I don't think this is a major problem. I think most of the participants are particularly aware that you can't do social influence research without lying. And so therefore, I don't think it's a big problem, but I suppose we can kind of turn to some kind of ideas. And we see here that he attempted to kind of get some kind of consent. And that was presumptive consent, which I mentioned in my previous video where he actually asked people kind of what to expect that they would do. So it's, it's, it's possibly that this form of ethics in the Milgram's research is not the biggest of problems for us to have a look at and was easily resolved. The next issue that we could talk about and I've mentioned in a previous video is this concept of right to withdraw. Now, if I do any form of research, I need to kind of be aware that my participants, there's a privilege to kind of have them there. And so therefore they can withdraw from the experiment at any particular time. They can also withdraw their data at any particular time. But we feel in Milgram's experiments that yes, they were told that they wouldn't forfeit the money and therefore could leave that, but they weren't reminded at any particular stage during the experiment. Now this is quite a tough one because once again, I do think that if you were kind of reminded that you could leave, it would be easy to leave. But Milgram does defend this slightly in saying, look, of course they were adults, they, they should have known that they could leave. So it kind of perhaps raises just a question for us, but that's probably all that it has for us. But the major concern that we do have is protection from psychological and physical harm. As an experimenter, we saw from Zimbardo that you really should be considering your participants and their emotional and psychological well-being and also the physical well-being. OK, and uh, we do know that this is an area in which Milgram was heavily criticised and potentially why now we find that it's practically impossible to do any of this type of research because we have ethics committees that will not approve of this. But we do have Diane Brum Brum Burmerand, who was a kind of a colleague of Milgram coming out of being very, very critical, saying that Milgram placed his participants under great emotional strain. And this emotional strain had consequences, and that's why it's ethical. The consequences were that they were stressed and they potentially had a loss of self-esteem. We also know that some of them needed treatment. So therefore, it's a direct consequence of the experiment. So without the experiment, they would not have had this stress, loss of self-esteem and needing treatment. In defense of Milgram, he believes that all the participants were debriefed afterwards and told that they had not harmed anyone um, and that they were able to meet the Confederates. If you read kind of Gina Perry's book on this, you find that this may not be the case. It seems likely that some of the participants early on were not um, told about the experiment until kind of after everything was finished and they received the letter. And it's a possibility that some of them would have been so traumatized that they may have ignored the letter. 
But we could argue that this was a very pivotal point for psychological research, because now we find that every form of research now has a debrief. The purpose of the debrief is to kind of give all that informed consent, that knowledge of the experiment to the participant so that they can say, yes, please use my data or thank you, you know, for the information. Let me process it, things like that. But we know that ethics is always going to be very difficult. In fact, there's a moral grey area for this, saying that is this actually worth doing? And the key to it is that Milgram didn't know he was going to cause stress. And experimenters like Milgram felt that you really needed to ask the question, because if we don't ask the question, we won't find the answers out. So you could look at a cost-benefit analysis and decide, OK, so actually harming some people in order to find out what he did was actually quite important. And to kind of back this idea up, we do see two things. First of all, is that when he gave some of his participants a questionnaire about the experiment, we see that a large portion of them actually said they were glad that they had taken part, that they had understood the importance of it. We also know that the American Psychological Association, that's what APA stands for, that they did an investigation on this and they decided that actually it was ethically acceptable. So this is probably for you to think about whether you think Milgram was unethical or not. Um, we can't kind of take it back. I suppose I mentioned this in class about psychology not always being about kind of, you know, fluffy, fluffy counts and singing Kumbaya and things like that. We have to kind of do hard research sometimes to find out the harsh realities of human behavior. But of course, I am very much aware that um, these days that we're not allowed to run a Milgram type experiment because we have decided that it is unethical. That's all I need to do in terms of ethics. Um, I'll see you in lessons and talk about the rest of the content. I hope you have a good evening. Okay, good night.